Hugh Laurie made a name for himself while he was still an undergraduate at Cambridge, along with close friends Emma Thompson and Stephen Fry. He went from footlights to fame in such shows as A Bit of Fry and Laurie and the Blackadder series. Having turned P.G. Woodhouse into TV gold, Hugh Laurie went off to Hollywood, where he is now the highest-paid television star in the world, with his hit series House. He's also an accomplished blues musician, with a new album just out. He's called it Let Them Talk, and I caught up with Hugh Laurie before he embarked on a European tour and began by asking him about the album. And some people raising their eyebrows at the notion of a man so lucky in life singing the blues. I would have done the same. Uh, in fact, I still do when I, I look at it myself. I go, yeah, well, really? Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad. I'm immensely proud of it. I don't mind saying. And this very, is very... newly. This is a lot of it is New Orleans jazz uh, yeah. and blues. Yeah, um, is that tradition? And you've played in New Orleans, I think. Is that right? I have indeed. Uh, it's quite recently. I found myself in the French Quarter playing. I mean, I've had all sorts of experiences along the way with this that, that um, I could scarcely have believed. Yeah, baby, you don't know. A lot of people, I think you've already referred to it in the past yourself, are going to say, so this, this blues, it's for sort of very, very uh, impoverished black men with no future ahead of them. And, you know, uh, <laughs> how can I put this gently? You've, life has treated you reasonably well, one it, way or another. Yes, it has. It has. Undeniable. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I, I'm so... I, I get so... Sorry. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Absolutely, of course I do. And, I, and, and again, I would probably think the same myself mm. if I were looking in from the outside. But at the same time, I just think, oh, well, really, you know, is that the way we, we just operate on this sort of grid system that we're only allowed to do this if we're that? How poor do I have to be in order to be a musician? Uh, you know, it, it's a, this, this demand that artists be, you know, starve in garrets, uh, also, artists in any form. But also that they only do one thing. You're not really yes. allowed to be an actor and That's to have right. musical ambitions. That's too. absolutely right. And I suppose there's a, there's, a, there's a reason behind that. There's a suspicion that uh, your intent is not serious. I understand that. But, but this is as serious as I get. I don't, I, I, there's nothing I've done that is more serious than this. Let's turn to House, which has made you, we read, the highest paid television actor in the world and has run to more than... You, you've reached the 100 episodes? 155. 155 episodes. episodes yeah. um, and remains enormously popular. You are able to say things, as it were, to a mainstream American audience, which, for a lot of them, have become almost unsayable. I mean, you can be sort of deeply aggressive and misogynistic and say appalling things in front of children and so on. And um, people come back for more. They do. They do. Have you seen me practice medicine? You know how much it costs to have a live-in maid, personal assistant, cook, massage therapist, whore? I do. She's willing to work four days a week for free. It's going to save me about 33000 all I have to do is say two stupid words. I do. I think I was probably attracted to the role in the first place because I'm not American. I think an, um, uh, my equivalent American actor would probably have thought, well, that way lies... Uh, that, that, that's, Career uh, suicide. It could be. Yeah. Could be. Because uh, you can make yourself very unpopular saying some of those things. People who think back to, I don't know, Jeeves and Worcester or the, the, the Fry and Laurie characters would think it was hard to think of anyone less likely to play a dark haunted American well, character than yourself. Bertie Worcester is definitely pretty much at the end of the scale. I don't know how much further you can go in that <laughs> direction without becoming a Teletubby. It's a very rare thing for people, I mean, in any field, to get the chance to sort of reinvent themselves. And I, I, um, I had this amazing chance and it all, you know, my, my ship came in. In the um, British television comedy years, you work very, very closely with some great writers, apart from your own self and, and, and your good friend uh, Stephen Fry, but there's also people like Ben Elton and, and Richard Curtis and so on. And in House, you've in, paid some very generous compliments to the writers of House. I'm just wondering how the relationship between a kind of, you know, very serious thinking actor like yourself and the writers works. Do you just simply take the script or are you constantly talking with them? Um, I, I, I meddle a little bit. It's a very different system over there. 
They, it's, it's more of a, because of the numbers they have to generate, uh, I mean, 155 shows in seven years, no, no, nobody could write 155 black adders. It would take 30 people to do that, which is about what we've had writing episodes of House. It's interesting you mentioned Blackadder because that's one of the very, very rare British examples of a series running for a long period of time. The British tradition seems to kill off even the best sort of sitcom or drama well, after a few episodes. Of course, in actual fact, even that wasn't that long. I mean, it's only uh, 24, I think, episodes mm. in all, um, which is a trifle for Americans. But uh, I think it's because... Over here, we place a. The, the, it, it tends to be p comedy, particularly, but also drama too, to an extent, is the product of one mind or maybe two. Uh, it tends to produce much more idiosyncratic characters, I think, terrific characters. But it is, it is very hard for a single person to sustain mm. uh, 155 episodes of Basil Fawlty and and or, or Rigsby or Captain Mannering. But doesn't television in this country have something to learn then? Because Almost everybody under 20 seems to be watching largely American-made um, products. Now, if I were to be quoted as saying that British television has a lot to learn from Americans, I would never hear the end of it. So you won't get me to say that. You said it, not me. <laughs> One of the, um, the most cheering things I ever read about you was that when you were going through a period of depression, P.G. Woodhouse mm. got you out of it. Yeah, absolutely. You can reach a point with P.G. Woodhouse where actually you do not even have to go to the shelf and pluck down Code of the Worcesters to you make just it. Start to you can actually start to go, oh, there was that wonderful moment where... And you can, you can be walking down the street and make yourself laugh or, or have him make you laugh with that one absolutely um, perfect phrase. Um, Tinkety-tonk, I said, and I meant it to sting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, they, you know, that, that cheers me up for a day. That's yeah. absolutely uh, it's a jewel. Hugh Laurie, and you can see a slightly longer version of that interview on the website. Hugh Laurie's playing at the Cheltenham Jazz Festival on the 2nd of May, his first ever live music gig in the UK. Well, the AV referendum campaign.